So I thought I'd have more to show you here this afternoon. <clears throat> this is a, a video about how effective swales are. Uh, five years ago, and I got to give a big shout out to uh, Mark Shepard for uh, kind of leading the way on that whole idea with uh, swales and key lines and all the stuff that he's been doing over there at, with his restoration agriculture. Uh, I took a workshop, two workshops from him. One was, one was theoretical, one was hands-on with a laser level and a bulldozer. And um, you don't need all that to do this. So we came back to our farm and five years ago put, put a bunch of swales in, uh, like 12 acres of pasture. And uh, they're actually so effective, I don't have much to show you. <clears throat> because they've already uh, absorbed and sunk into the ground. Uh, one of the one of the fastest, biggest uh, spring uh, snow melts that we've ever had. If you look down this way a little bit, you can see there's some standing water there uh, on either side of the driveway. Uh, it used to go across the driveway, and when our kids were small, we'd keep a canoe out here, and we'd uh, we'd put them in a canoe and push them across the the pond to the school bus in the morning. Uh, that's not happening now because we're capturing a lot of the water. You can kind of see this crest of a hill here where uh, a lot of runoff would go down towards that, that uh, ephemeral pond down there. Uh, I'm actually standing here, as you can see, in about 18 inches of water and slush that is no longer running down there. And actually, uh, this, I'll make sure I don't fall over here, <clears throat> this swale here runs all along this crest uh, to the other side where there's another pocket pond. And um, it, it just captures all this stuff. <clears throat> Uh, you can see down down hill of the swale, we've got uh, oak trees and hazelnuts growing. So the, the I mean the purpose of of a swale is to capture like serious snow melt, spread it out, soak it in the ground, or like big rainstorms. They're for kind of catastrophic water runoff. Uh, and uh, we just had one. It's hard to it's hard to believe, but a week ago today, uh, this is northern Wisconsin. School was canceled because there was a the the biggest April blizzard they've had uh, ever. And this area you're looking at a week ago was covered with anywhere from 18 inches to three feet of snow. And it's only been in the last three days where it's just melted off almost in, entirely. I mean, there's places where it's still around. And uh, when I was out here yesterday, uh, kind of checking out the swales and what was going on, I was actually a little concerned at one point because I, I thought, uh, and one of the main swales we had was so full, it was overflowing. Uh, there was a little bit of erosion going on the downhill side because we just bermed it up a little bit more last summer, planted uh, grass and grasses and clovers and stuff on it. Uh, but as, as the water was running over, it was pouring over, it was starting to erode a little bit, uh, but there was enough enough there that it uh, it kind of stayed and did what it was supposed to do. So I'm not going to be able to show you water moving. I'm going to show you how uh, it's all, all already done its job and uh, captured one of the biggest runoffs ever and already soaked it in the ground. Here you can see the back side of this upper swale pocket pond on the other side. Uh, here you can see some pretty nice hazelnuts that we actually got our our first few uh, 
hazelnuts uh, off of them last fall. And here's where it gets, you know, a little more interesting. This is pasture. Uh, we've been doing managed intensive grazing in here for probably five, six years. So our, our, uh, organic, our soil organic matter is going up. We've been doing a lot of uh, planting of different uh, uh, pasture mixes. Uh, we also have a single shank subsoiler that we've been putting key lines in, uh, which again allows uh, much more water infiltration. And as you can see, uh, well, yesterday, like I said, I came out here and it was running across here in a torrent, an absolute torrent. Uh, this is an interesting swale right here. You can see there's still a little water in it. But uh, when, if you, it goes up to the road, and there's a culvert under the road that goes into a ditch on the other side there. And there's probably about 20 acres across the road that drains into the culvert and into our swale. And, and it's water that we get to use. It's CRP land, so there's no chemicals or anything. Uh, here's the boys having their uh, afternoon hay, because it's still, they still need some, even though uh, things are greening up. Uh, but right, right in this area right here, uh, this was just a torrent of water coming across here. Uh, for the last three days, it hits this swale down here, which sends it off to left and right. Uh, and again, these things, today when I came over, uh, a couple hours ago, water was running through here. I thought, great, I'll come back this evening and uh, get a video of how well this is working. Well, it's, it's working so well, there's no water in it. And uh, I never would have thought that it could have been that effective uh, with all the snow that we had here. I mean, I'm serious. There was so much water. This part right in here, you can kind of see, uh, it's still a little wet. And there's some new growth coming up in the bottom of it. Uh, but you can see... Like right here, it was probably about 10 feet wide where it was pouring over the top. You can see where it was running downhill to the next swale down there. And there's where you can see where, again, there's some, uh, there's some water standing there. I'm going to try to get down there and not kill myself. <clears throat> From the uh, snow that's still melting off uh, right around it. Here's the here's the area where uh, you can see there's a little bit of erosion going on here and the reason for that is uh, just uh, last summer this swale wasn't high enough so we uh, bermed it up a little bit more uh, planted, planted it so we, we got some roots in here and the steers kept eating this, this side of it, so I gotta push them further away with the electric. But uh, you can see we got some erosion here, uh, but it held. And if it held yesterday, oh my gosh, it's gonna hold anything. So then we get down here, and you can see again that there's standing water in this one. This is pot, another another pocket pond down here. And uh, like three hours ago, water was just uh, pouring through here. And if you look way down in that corner there, before we started doing all of this, uh, this time of year when the big snow melt is happening, uh, you could walk in there with your boots and, and it would be two feet deep of melted snow and and water like a big slushy. So uh, I don't care what kind of agriculture you're doing. I don't, we do animals. We do rotationally grazed 
uh, chickens, pigs, and steers. And we also have a two-acre organic garden, and uh, we do maple syrup. And we're creating silvo pasture out in this field by planting woody perennials along the swales and along some of our fences. Uh, and then we have another area where it's a wooded area that we're clearing for silvo pasture. So we're big into that. We're big into that. Uh, so what I want to say is, whatever you're doing, whatever kind of agriculture you're doing, the very first step is doing your water management plan. And um, I, I seriously owe so much, and so many people owe so much to Mark Shepard for making that clear. Uh, you can, you know, like, depending on the size of your operation, uh, maybe you need a, a bulldozer and a laser level to put them in. I did all of this with a big tripod, uh, not a tripod, uh, anyway, with a, I didn't use a laser level. I used pretty primitive tools and a, and a, a three bottom plow on a, on a Ford 4000, it's about 50 horsepower, and uh, put all of our swales in, laid them out, did the plowing, did a little disking, a little raking, and, uh, and then, yeah, we started also um, using uh, the subsoiler to key line this place. And we're, so, we're soaking so much water into the ground that it's, it's unfathomable that three days after all the snow that was here, we don't have running water going anywhere. Uh, you got to do this. Um, that's all I got for you. I wish I could show you some water just running around here, but we've already soaked it all into the ground. And uh, that makes me a happy guy. So um, any questions, let us know. Just, resp you know, you can leave, leave notes on, uh, on the farm page and on our, uh, on our Facebook page and on our YouTube page. And, and um, I can probably hook you up with information so that you can get your water management tools going uh, as well. Uh, if you have done this already, uh, people want to know about it. It's uh, probably the most important resource coming through any farm is the, is the water. And you, you don't want to put drain tiles in and send it to the next farm downhill. You want to put in swales and pocket ponds and all kinds of stuff. Keep that water for yourself and uh, grow stuff with it. Uh, that's all I got for you. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, afternoon here. And seriously, a week ago today, uh, we were at the tail end of one of the biggest blizzards that we had all winter long. And now it's all just soaked into the ground. That's it.